I pulled this fabric out because it's one of my favorite fabrics to cut. It is a nice Korean velvet fabric. You can see the nice floral prints, very vivid, very bright. It's so bold. And of course, it's on a black backdrop. So of course, I'm going to love it. Just look at how it shines in the light. So amazing, so beautiful, so perfect. It could be my wallpaper, it's so perfect. So with this, I was thinking of making a rectangle skirt. I'm not sure if it's going to go out well, but you'll see what happens at the end of this video or beforehand if you want to skip to the end, but please don't do that. Believe it or not, I have to cut off the rest of this material to create a rectangle. In order to do that, I'm just going to fold it over and find the most available spot and create it into a rectangle, cutting off the side edges and this little white top salvage line. This is super important because I want to make sure that I barely have any scraps left over. I love this fabric so much so I just want to make sure that I use all of it and it's nice and pretty and turning it into a skirt. So in 2021, I'm still going to be sewing a lot of my own clothes and I'm not really fighting fast fashion with it, but I'm just hoping to inspire you guys to take the pieces that you have at home and maybe modify them. That's because fabric and fast fashion is actually the number one cause of pollution in the world. And let's fight it together. So to help me go ahead and cut out this rectangle, I am using this really funny edge of my Jimmy Choo bag. I do like to keep these bags. They're actually really nice. And this is where I'm going to draw a straight line rather than using a ruler because I'm psychotic. So go ahead and do that and make sure because this is a velvet, it's going to stretch when I cut it. Or if I like stretch it while I'm holding the fabric, I gotta be careful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly pin around it and then cut it out. I don't know about you guys, but cutting fabric is also super satisfying. It feels great, but at the same time, it's actually super nerve wracking. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but that's how I feel. <laughs> A lot of the times the fabric I get, I'll never be able to get again. And that's why I'm super scared to cut it. I made sure to fold all my edges together and make sure that the bottom edge lines up. So I have this really nice crisp line and this way I don't have any crinkles. This is the part where I think I messed up because at the end, I just only cut a straight line when I should have cut a curve. So it's really important to listen to what I'm saying right now versus following what I'm doing. Make sure to cut a nice curve when it comes to this part. So I'm going to measure my waistband and this is super important because you need to take off about a few inches because the fabric's going to hang. So I took off like an inch and a half to two inches off, which is about like roughly 10 centimeters. So that's really important. So I measured that out on the actual top line and I just cut a straight line across. This is where I messed up. No, you need to make a circle cut all the way around. This way the fabric will hang and drape properly like a circle skirt because that's essentially what we're making, not supposed to be like this. But I will go back eventually and fix it. I'm just really lazy and I should probably fix it. So you don't wanna just cut straight across that fold. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and unpin everything and open it up. You can already see how the fabric is laying because it's on that straight cut versus having it on a fold and that's not ideally what I want. Now because this is a stretch fabric, I'm gonna grab some of my scraps and try to find the longest piece and turn it into a waistband for me. Obviously you just saw that I did my waist measurement so I'm gonna use that same one and just cut a nice band that is very thick so I can fold it over and it will house the rest of the skirt. Now I do plan on using elastic in my waistband to support the weight of the skirt. So make sure your waistband is pretty wide. Mine is about three to four inches. I use that measurement a lot and that's because I like having a comfortable size waistband. Nothing small. I think that's really weird. So with my waistband, I'm going to sew both edges together creating one giant loop. This loop is super important because we want to keep the raw edges on the inside and not exposed when we attach it to the skirt. You can see this is what the casing looks like now for the waistband and now I'm going to fold it over. This is why it's super important for it to be about four inches or like 20 cents centimeters, something like that, and fold it. This way, the entire waistband is really nicely hiding the seam that it put it together. And then you have a casing for the elastic when you fold it over. Pin this to the skirt waistband so that way it is really nice. Obviously, I'm going to have to go back and redo it and I'll show you in a bit. But yeah, this first skirt part, all this part right now is kind of a fail because the skirt hangs funny. Once you have the entire waistband pinned properly onto your skirt, Go ahead and sew it all together. Make sure not to sew the entire skirt closed because then you can't add the elastic. So leave an area open such as the seam where the waistband is 
at the center side and go ahead and leave that open so you can add the elastic in a bit. Grab some elastic and my elastic's actually pretty wide. Make sure it goes around your waist nicely and snugly. You don't want this to be able to stretch out too hard but you don't want it too tight on you to create discomfort. Go ahead and cut it to your waist measurement but make sure it's a little bit smaller because you want it to stretch and stay on you without falling off. For me, generally, I like to wrap it around myself and then make it a little bit tighter to where I'm comfortable with it and then cut it. So what I like to do is pin one edge to the skirt itself so it doesn't get lost inside the waistband. And the other side, I attach a safety pin and I feed it through the waistband. This way, none of it gets lost and I can actually see where everything is going to be and spacing so it's much easier. This also helps so I do not flip my elastic and so it doesn't get all wonky. Once you have your entire elastic nicely put in and it's all facing the correct way and not folding anywhere, go ahead and sew your elastic together and then sew that last edge shut on your skirt. For my elastic, I actually like to do multiple sewing like stitches and this is because I want it to be super secure. I don't really care about how pretty it's going to look because it's hidden inside of the skirt waistband. So now you can see the entire skirt waistband is fully closed now and it was a really quick and easy skirt. I didn't have to do too much cutting involved with this. Obviously I need to go back and fix that waistband kind of look but make sure to curve your waistband cut first with a smaller edge, kind of like a circle skirt and sew everything together, such as your waistband to your skirt and your waistband together because that's normally just one rectangle piece, but yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and see how it looks and then I'll do the editing for it later. Yeah, in a second, okay. Okay, so here we are going back to it. I busted out the seam ripper and I'm going to be taking out this black seam, AKA the waistband. I'm just going to take it all apart. So turn on your favorite show and start ripping it apart. Now, because I just cut a straight line across the fold, I'm just going to go back and zigzag it all back together. So I'm setting my zigzag stitch to the widest length and going really slow with black thread. Mm, I have a nice big one. This one is 34 inches big by 22 inches. Oh, oh manufacturing smell. It smells so good. Mm. You guys don't understand. It's so wonderful to have a smell of new. So now we're gonna go ahead and open this bad boy like a smart person. Not. <laughs> I don't wanna cut myself. Ew. Oh, cool. First thing I'm gonna cut. Oh. That's safe. So there are plenty of YouTube tutorials out there on telling you to cut on the curve. This is going to be one of those tutorials telling you cut on the curve of a fabric when you're trying to make a skirt and not straight unless you're doing a rectangle skirt. And I have plenty of those videos on my YouTube channel. This one is kind of supposed to be a like circle skirt but made from a square and I kind of messed that up but there are calculators for that and if you have any questions just leave a comment down below. I'm going to mark out from four from the corner and slowly work my way to make a semicircle onto my fabric. Because this fabric likes to shift around when I'm cutting it I'm going to go ahead and pin close to the line where I'm going to cut. I'm super excited I'm going to try this new circular rotary cutter and here we go. I just oh it went through four layers. Wow, amazing. So I'm just gonna start at the edge and then kind of work my way backwards because I've never used one of these before and I just wanna be super safe. This is my first time using it. Super exciting to add this. And my goodness, this is this is exciting for me. So I don't know about you guys, but this is this is very not scissory. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this off. Make sure you cut it off as well. And then, you know, just repeat the process of attaching your waistband to your skirt, hem, top, bottom, waistline. It's not really the bottom, but attach this to your waistband. You can see the differences in the cuts here side by side. The right side is when I cut straight across the fabric and the left is the correct way that you should cut, AKA in a half semicircle. This makes the handkerchief hemline and it's super fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel for more awesome sewing content. Remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye.